Just like to offer a big shout out to Touchdown Digital, the sponsor of this week's video. Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to another vlog. Uh, today, I've come out to a location which I photograph quite a lot actually, and probably six or seven times a year. And the reason for that is, is because of the light that you, that we can get here, especially for sunsets. And I'm here to catch, hopefully, a nice sunset here tonight. Now, and that's what this video will be about. I'll run through with you how I tackle um, high dynamic range sunset um, photography here in the Blue Mountains. But the reason why I photograph this quite a lot, as I said, six or seven times a year, it's because the light is just spectacular here. I've been here when the light, the sky's just been a firebomb. Then there's been other times where it's been stormy and uh, cloudy and then fogs roll in and it's absolutely unbelievable place. And I just, I have a soft spot for this place. And this place is called Boar's Head in um, near Katoomba in the Blue Mountains of New South Wales, not far from where I live. And it's pretty calm. It's a little bit windy on the top. Um, but once I get down there, I'll, um, I'll look for some composition and, and I'll show you exactly what I'm doing and how to handle um, conditions like we have here this afternoon. Uh, fingers crossed that I might stay after nine o'clock tonight and do a bit of light painting on some of the foreground rock. Um, all depends on the weather uh, and the sky. If the sky is clear, I might be able to do it, uh, but we'll have to wait and see. But I will be shooting into um, dusk and then early evening, so fingers crossed I'll get some nice images. But one of the reasons why, as, as I said, one of the reasons why I do photograph this quite a lot is because of the light. The light here is just absolutely gorgeous, and it's just every time I come here, um, the the light just does amazing things. It's a fantastic location for photography. Um, the Blue Mountains is renowned for uh, sunset photography because geographically the way it is situated. Um, I like photographing sunrises and sunsets, but here in the mountains it's all about sunsets. Uh, we do have a handful of locations here in the Blue Mountains which are on the other side <coughs> for sunrise, but unfortunately a lot of them are man-made um, viewing platforms or they're platforms, rocky platforms that have got fences or railings around them, you know, to protect people from falling to their deaths, of course. Um, so I only like photographing sunsets here in the Blue Mountains because, as I said, I've captured many over the years and every time I come to this location, it just doesn't, doesn't disappoint. So what I'll do, I will um, go down to the track, climb down the track down there, walk down the track, and then I'll turn this camera back on and then I'll run through with you how to photograph this magnificent location here called Boar's Head in the Blue Mountains of New South Wales. Okay, I'll just uh, make my way down through here. As you can see, that's where I am. It's um, sort of like a rough sort of track, but Easy to easy do, easy to do, but the views here are just mind blowing. Really, I mean, and this is why I come here. Um, summertime really isn't the best time to photograph this location because you get a lot of haze, and as you can see, there's a lot of haze there. Um, thank God for the dehaze slider in Lightroom. That's my friend when I come up here. But other than that, it's. Uh, still a champion location it's 30 degrees here which is very warm for the mountains it's hotter down at the base of the mountains around the penrith area i had 36 or 37 down there today uh, it should cool off to about 16 17 here tonight so and hopefully that breeze might drop a bit because if the wind picks up um it makes our my exposures meaning shutter speed a bit awkward because I don't really like to have any blurs in the image so I suppose I could take images of the trees and the ferns that are moving at a different shutter speed then take a normal shot and then blend them together in Photoshop later on I suppose I could do that but we'll see how we go but this is the track down here and as you can see I'm just they put these steps in here and then it stops and then you start to get into the natural the natural rock just down here you're probably looking into the sun I apologize for that but 
we're nearly here. I've got to go down there. Okay, as you can see, this is where I'll be shooting here tonight. Well, hopefully, the sun's going to set to my right of me here. Um, 16 to 35 and 24 to 105, they're the lens that I've brought. So, I think uh, we'll capture this very nicely. Um, it's a great location here, as I said, I've been here many times. So, um, I'll set up and I'll come back to you and just show you exactly how to photograph this place. Okay, so what you're looking at there is this rock here. And what I'll do, exactly where I'm filming this video here, I will probably shoot it at 24 millimeter. Now, <clears throat> if you have a look, if I raise this camera up like that, we're starting to lose a bit of that foreground here. But if I go too low, it blocks out narrow neck, which is that runs along there. <clears throat> so careful placement of the tripod, down reasonably low, probably a bit lower than my waist. <clears throat> I'll be able to capture all that foreground there and still capture the background. This is layers, okay? So this is what I call add, adding visual weight, visual weight to the image. You're creating a foreground, then a midground, and a background. And this place is ideal for this type of photography because of um, the geographics of it and the way the, the lay of the land, actually. Um, the bottom line is you just have to build build every image you take when you come to locations like this. Um, I've got these uh, trees here, this natural bush. That'll frame it very nicely. Um, they are moving a little bit, so we'll see how we go there. But then they stop. And they move again, then they stop. So, a bit tricky, but other than that, um, yeah, I'll line this up and I've just got to wait a little bit longer for the light actually, and then I'll come back to you. Okay, so one of the reasons, or one of the reasons why I like photographing uh, sunsets, um, doesn't matter, doesn't have to be in the Blue Mountains, could be anywhere in this world actually, um, is you've got more time, you have more time to set up. You have more time to um, suss out the area, look at different compositions. Um, you're not racing around, you're not rushing. Um, you're in a relaxed uh, frame of mind. Um, you you just got plenty of time up your sleeve. You know, you've probably got a couple of hours to sort out your composition and get your gear ready and get your tripod set up and get everything dialed in before the magic happens with the sky on sunset. The thing with sunrise photography you don't have much time and because the sun rises quicker than it does when it sets it sets a lot slower so um, I'm about an hour away from uh, when the magic should happen I'm getting a bit of cloud now a bit of pink over there which is beautiful so fingers crossed probably won't get many shots but the ones I get will be really really good here and uh, it never never fails this location but yeah, sun, sunset photography for me is, um, I really like it. You know, I've been doing this for four decades, it's over 40 years, and if you want to hear or witness a robust conversation between photographers, I can guarantee you that um, one of the hot topics is what's better to shoot, sunrises or sunsets, and there's pros and cons for both, as I just said. Um, with sunset photography, you have more time up your sleeve to get everything organised and get ready and, and look at your compositions, or even travel to your location. Um, with sunrise photography, you don't have that luxury, unfortunately. And sunrises are great, don't get me wrong. I've photographed heaps of them over my photography career. Um, you just have more time with sunset photography. Um, if you do come out to this location, um, when you come down the track, as you've seen in this video, 
uh, you veer to the left and there's a trail that's been made by um, uh, abseilers actually and you'll see the D-rings in the rock where they um, attach their clips and then go down the side of the cliffs here. We're up very high here um, but I'll spin the camera around and just show you um, what I will be photographing when the light um, is more favourable. Okay, as you can see, that's where the sun's going to set, just over there, and it'll be lighting up through here. And that should all light up nice and red. As I said, it's a great location, this, and it's, um, it has to be photographed um, to the best of your ability actually because this is um, pristine it's so old these rocks here are lava um, when you look at them you know as you can see she's an old area but spectacular so when I talk about visual balance I'm talking about adding things like these rocks here as the foreground and then you've got the fernery over here or the greenery that's balance that's weighted balance where if I took a, sh a photograph like this there's just too much sky for a start you got narrow neck there but that's it there's nothing to really draw the viewers eye into the picture and this is why I believe you must include the foreground element because that in itself will draw the viewer's eye into the image and go all the way through. Um, really got to think. You got to think when you before you push the sh um, shutter button and make people just hang on to your image when they're looking at them. So, um, but that's what I call adding visual weight and balance to the image. It's just so quiet here. You could sit here all afternoon and incredible place. So I'll give it another half an hour and then I'll, I'll get the camera out and I'll start taking a few shots and I'll get back to you then. Okay, what I'm doing here is I can give you one tip with landscape photography that is when you get to your location don't be in a hurry to set up your tripod and your camera and start firing off the shutter button like a machine gun you're doing yourself an injustice there grab your camera I not I haven't even I'm not even taking any shots hand holding this camera what I'm doing I'm looking at all the composition or compositional elements and just by looking through here like this that could be a good starburst there there's a good composition right there with the larvid rocks um, over here shooting this way it's 16 millimeter I'll bring it into 24 this is what I mean by scouting the location even though i've been here many many times over the years i still find areas within this little um, landscape here that i missed so the idea is don't set up your camera and tripod as soon as you get to a location walk around and start having a look i'm not as i said i'm not actually taking photographs i'm just looking through the viewfinder it's going into the memory bank here so as the light's fading, I know exactly where I've got to go with the tripod. So we just look around like so. Yep, that's good. Yep, that'll be another one. The starburst a bit later will be perfect. I've got trees down there. Perfect. There's probably five or six compositions here that I can 
shoot. So free tip, when you get to your location, whether you know it or not, don't be in a hurry to set up your camera and tripod. Walk around with your camera, visualize the scenes, put it in your mind, and when you're ready to set everything up, you've already got your composition lined up, ready to go, because there's nothing worse when you arrive at a scene and you start shooting, and then you realize, I should have moved the tripod over there, or I should have the tripod over there. Because there's an old saying with tripods, a lot of people, I've seen this over the years in the workshops, that they are, people arrive at a location, they set their tripod up, set their camera up, and the tripod doesn't move. I mean, tripods are good, but they can stifle your creativity if you let them. So move around as soon as you get to your location. Don't set up your tripod. Don't get your camera on your tripod. Get your camera handheld. Walk around. Mesmerise in the mind compositions for later on in the day. Well, that's it guys, that's it for another episode of Sniper Photography. Um, turned out to be okay. I did a bit of light painting with um, this tactical torch. An unbelievable thing. I mean, it throws a beam of, I think it's up to 600 meters. It's incredible. Um, so I did a bit of light painting with that. I'll put these images at the end of this, um, at the end of this video. But basically it was, <clears throat> once again, the high dynamic range here was uh, pretty, uh, pretty tough. So I had to bracket the exposures, which um, uh, should work out okay. I think uh, it wasn't too bad. It's now currently 8.30 and it is dark here now. Um, there's a few mosquitoes around and a few bugs and things. So I'll get back to the car. But other than that, it was, uh, it was pretty good. I mean, you know, as I said at the beginning of this video, with sunrise and sunset. Sunset uh, photography, you have a bit more time up your sleeve. And also too, when you get to your location, don't, just don't set up your tripod and camera. Try and uh, just grab your camera, take the lens cap off and look through the viewfinder and, and just try and find composition so you can remember for later on when it gets dark like this. And that's what I did tonight. Uh, one of the images I think going to be a cracker because I had this band of um, like the sunset right across uh, the top of Naranek and near the Megalong Valley and then I slowly light painted the rock formation that you've seen earlier in this video. It should come out okay, fingers crossed, so, but it's all a bit of fun, a bit of experimentation. Um, but yeah, I hope those few little tips I gave you today are helpful. Um, in a few days time I'm going to a place called the Grand Canyon which is near um, Govett Sleep and uh, out through Blackheath there and it's not like the um, uh, Grand Canyon of the United States this is a rainforest canyon so uh, it's a bit of a walk down there and a bit of a walk out but I'm used to that so so that'll be an up in the next few days after this video so thanks for joining me here today um, I'll just walk back to the car now the street is pretty dark um, I'm out of the track it wasn't too bad especially with the tactical torch it's a brilliant and I'll put a link to this tactical torch uh, in the description box below this video. But that's it for another episode of Sniper Photography. Thank you for joining me. And as I always say, be nice to yourself, family and your friends. But most of all, you keep shooting and keep smiling. Bye for now. Jeez, I'm going to enjoy this cold beer.